for tuning in. Tonight's terrifying tale concerns a housewife, or should I say castle wife, at the end of her tether. Her husband's a real pain in the neck, and she's glad to be out of the house. So, Dracula's wife walks into a local bank and the bank teller, that's American isn't it, the, uh, the cashier, whatever they're called, says, hello Mrs Dracula, this is an unexpected visit, how can we help you? And she says, oh it's, it's Dracula, I can't stand it anymore, he's so old, I'm leaving him. And the cashier says, what well, you're leaving him just because he's old? And she says, no it's not just that. He's completely given up on himself. Never makes an effort. If he'd just look in the mirror before he leaves the house. Never wears his retainer. You know, to fix that. And he keeps making grave mistakes at work. I'm worried he'll lose his job. He's only just started at this new cryptocurrency firm. It's called Bitcoin. And you know, when he told me that, he expected me to laugh, you know, the way that I would, used to do it, all these like silly jokes. But instead of laughing, there was just this pause and pause for laughter should be. And that pause, I just heard like a little voice whispering, this marriage is over. A bit awkward to not be me actually saying it. And another thing, right? He keeps bringing virgins into our house. I know, like... Like, he's actually bringing virgins into our house. And I'm just like, I don't want anything virgin in my house. You know, not after what Richard Branson did to the NHS. And to be honest, like, when I married him, you know, he's an old guy, big house. Um, I kind of thought, I kind of thought that would all be mine by now. But the guy just won't, he just won't die. I keep putting garlic in his bolognese, but that's not done the trick. And apparently, life insurance is not a thing for a vampire. They won't cover you. I even considered garlic tampons. We had an argument yesterday. You know what he said to me? He goes, he doesn't like Nando's, yeah? Doesn't like Robocop, and he thinks I've got a fat ass. And I was really offended. I said to him, I'm always at the gym. I'm always squatting. Started crying, saying that you can't talk to women like that anymore. You know what he said? He goes, I invented sexism. <laughs> the other thing that annoys me about him is his bloody coughing. He says to me, I think I may have the coronavirus. I said, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about where you bloody sleep. So anyway, the cashier says to Mrs. Dracula, look, I'm afraid you have my utmost sympathies with all of this, Mrs. Dracula, but I'm afraid if your query pertains directly to your husband, then he's going to have to attend the bank in person with two forms of ID at some point within the bank's opening hours. And Mrs. Dracula said, well, that's not gonna happen because firstly, he does have a tendency to sleep in. And secondly, he's not gonna turn up to the bank unless you invite him. And as for internet banking, You've got no chance. He does not do apps, Dracula. He's got one app. He likes Strava. He's got quite into cycling recently. I think it's his age. Just trying to be a bit more health conscious. We both are. But as for technology, you've got no chance. You're not getting him on internet banking, honestly. A couple of years ago, uh, at Christmas, uh, we had a George Foreman grill bought for us. A couple of Mountain High Day got it us. Lovely couple. I think he was in, in insurance or something. She worked in a school. Can't remember where they were from. A uh, lovely couple. They were there for two weeks. We only just we just booked the seven nights. It was enough for us. Uh, but they bought us a George Foreman grill. And Jack, he couldn't get on with it. He hated it. He said it ruined the meat. It dried it out. He couldn't really get his, you know. But uh, also very difficult to clean because of the ridges on them. What? I'm, I'm not giving you a live story. You asked me a question and I'm answering it. 
So no need to get... I'm a customer at the end of the day, so just... And he does need a bank because he used to keep all his money under his bed, but he never knew how much he had because he can't add up, you see. It's quite ironic for a count. So anyway, I said to him, you need to have a long, hard look at yourself in the mirror. And he said, I can't. can't do that. I said, that's typically you, bloody stubborn as a mule. You'll never change. I said, now's the perfect time for a bit of self-reflection. He said, self-reflection? What don't you get about this? I'm a frigging vampire. I said, don't you speak to me like that. And you can forget about telephone banking before you suggest it. He tried to register once. They asked him what his title was. He said count. They thought he said something else and hung up on him. And he's not big on second chances, so... Now, you'd be lucky to even get him to come in here. He won't even be happy that I've come into the bank because he reckons he's got a phobia of money. It's a real thing. It's called chromophobia. He googled it once when we were having an argument because I said, oh, it's very convenient for a man that likes to sleep in all day to have a phobia of money because God forbid the blood-sucking leech would bring anything in. And then he started trying to claim it was an actual disability and he got all on his high horse about that. I mean, this castle's massive. It costs a fortune to heat and there's no winter fuel allowance in Transylvania. One thing that's... Uh... I don't know if it's if it's that relevant to any of this, but he really hates gypsies. Really doesn't like them. And I'm like, what? Because they live in caravans and travel around. And he says, no, they smell. They smell weird. I was like, maybe you've just... Maybe you just encountered some particularly smelly gypsies. It doesn't mean they all smell bad. I've never known this stereotype of gypsies smelling bad. What is this? Are you setting up a pun or something? He said, no, no, I really don't like travellers. I can't be with someone like that. The cashier is finding it quite tedious at this point, but Mrs Dracula continues. Also, maybe uh, quite late in the story to be mentioning this, but he has a, um, a very annoying habit. And, um, yeah, when your fucking partner has a habit and you're like, OK, I can get over it. Uh, but he has this... He has this annoying habit where he keeps fucking my sister. And, um, very irritating. And he can't stop it. And the cashier says, I get it. You don't like your husband. But at the end of the day, you did marry a vampire. He's a killer. He's a murderer. He's... Massively, he's massively anti-Semitic. No pun here. No pun here, just... Very racist. I mean, you'll be glad to know he's not hes not a Holocaust denier. Not at all. But he knows it happened. And, um... He was quite pleased with it. And I can never get a decent drink around the castle. We're always running low in the fridge. And the cashier says, I think I see what's going wrong here. As riveting as this tale has been, Mrs. Dracula, I must sadly inform you that you seem to have stumbled into the wrong type of bank. Um, this isn't a blood bank, I'm afraid. It's just a regular bank. And Mrs. Dracula said, no, it's not that. I've had enough of Dracula, and I was told that if I came to the bank, I could get a new account. Oh, no, 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 no. That's what this was leading to. Fuck's sake, man. I've won an award. I'm an award-winning comedian and my name's on this shit now. This kind of thing won't end up on IMDb, will it? I want a good IMDb. I mean, do you want to try that again? And Mrs Dracula said, no, it's not that. I decided I'm going to kill Dracula and I was told to come to the bank because I've heard that you have stakeholders. No. And Mrs Dracula said, no, it's not that. I was told that I could go to the bank if I wanted to stop a cheque. And the cashier said, yeah, but Dracula's Romanian, isn't he? And Mrs Dracula said, yeah, but surely that's near enough, isn't it? Whatever happened to flexible banking? No. Wow. That's... 
seemed to drain the life out of it. Time has passed, anyway, and some of us are closer to the grave, and others the exact same distance away. So until next time. <laughs>